The State House of Republic of Kenya today released a video where the President William Ruto is seen talking, trembling, but is shaken about a topic or rather an issue that is not directly affecting the country Kenya according to a commoner's understanding. And without much ado, I want us to watch that video here. Then when we come back, we are going to do an in-depth analysis on just this video. On Wednesday, Africa suffered a serious setback in its democratic gains as the aspirations of the people of Niger for constitutional democracy were subverted by an unconstitutional change of government that deposed Mohamed Bazoum, a democratically elected president. The Republic of Kenya joins the rest of the world to condemn in the strongest terms this unconstitutional act that subverts democracy through a coup d'etat and calls for the immediate release of President Mohamed Bazoum, who is reportedly seized by members of the Presidential Guard. Throughout our continent's history, we have strived tirelessly to nurture the principles of democracy, aligning ourselves with the aspirations of the African people for freedom and self-determination. This fundamental norm is crystallized in Article 4P, of the Constitutive Act of the Africa Union, which unequivocably condemns and rejects any unconstitutional change of government. The government and the people of Kenya earnestly urge all parties involved to refrain from further escalation that might jeopardize the lives and livelihoods of the people of Niger. We call for the swift restoration of constitutional rule ensuring the protection of the population and a return to full civilian authority while upholding utmost respect for the country's institutions. In this moment of strife, we implore all parties to engage in constructive discourse to restore peace in this fraternal nation which has steadfastly stood as a bulwark against terrorism and its agents in the Sahel region. The resurgence of military coups and attempts to subvert the will of the people on our beloved continent demands a united and global response to hold those responsible accountable for their actions. Let us stand together as one to reaffirm our commitment to democracy, liberty, and the progress we have achieved. We must remain vigilant, guarding against any slide back into dark days that threaten the hard-fought gains in democracy. Kenya is willing to assist in resolving the conflict under the auspices of the Africa Union should it be deemed appropriate. Africa shall continue to shine as a beacon of hope and progress, and we shall never waver in our pursuit of a brighter future for all. May peace and prosperity prevail across our great continent and beyond. Thank you, and God bless Africa. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I think for those who have interest in geopolitics, this is the podcast you need to listen to. And at this point, let us explain what exactly happened in Niger two days ago, that is Wednesday night, the democratically elected Niger president Mohamed Bazoum was detained by and removed in a coup that was plotted by members of his presidential guard and it was still clear and clear on who is taking charge of that country. Nigerian president uh, Timudu who is also the chairman of ECOWAS, the Western African bloc, had dispatched a delegation to Niger's capital to try to broker a deal between the uh, plotters of the coup and uh, Mohamed Bazoum uh, team. This, as we speak, 
the Niger president was still being detained by the coup plotters. Now, something happened yesterday. Uh, remember, this was the first election because he was elected last in 2019. This was the first peaceful election of the French colony. And something happened yesterday that I want us to pay attention to here. In the capital of Niger, uh, known as Niamey, opposition stronghold, several hundred people on Thursday gathered to chant support for the Russian military group Wagner while waving the Russian flags. Now, this, what exactly is happening is that the opposition stronghold are the ones that are supporting the military coup, while the president's party was ransacked, party headquarters was ransacked, cars torched, and the photo we're seeing here is a photo from, that I captured from it. And those who've been following knows very well that uh, for the last three years, French colonies in West Africa has been experiencing coups. That is Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea, and now, um, and now, um, rather, and now Niger. Now, the presence of the Russian Wagner group in it has likely been blamed as the key um, fuelers, uh, catalysts of the coups in the French colonies, while the whole thing is scrambling for resources. Now, I think you need to understand up to that point, you may need to take time and follow up what's happening in Asia for those who are interested in geopolitics. Now you realize that uh, while Ruto was talking, he spoke on his behalf and from the start of that video, that's why I played that video full. From the start of that video, he spoke on his capacity as the President of Republic of Kenya and the Commander-in-Chief. But not, and, and, and of course the speech, the tone of the speech was African reconnaissance. Renaissance um, it was speaking to the continent and not really on the side. He's the first East African president to comment about it officially. He's the first president in the continent even to record a video himself standing in solidarity. Of course, the others that have also stood in solidarity with the embattled president. But one of the things that has been going on is that Ruto has come out and you know this is in correspondence or rather this correlates with his speeches at the continental stage vouching for the African solidarity. I need to say for avoidance of any doubt I am not vouching and on my capacity and in myself and as the bold position of the bold is that um, I'm not vouching for military rule not any non-constitutional role. I think I did one podcast on that and um, someone uh, called me, texted me here in, in a WhatsApp and really gave us, gave me a very in-depth look into what um, a non-civilian rule is or what a military rule is. Eh? And I think it's not what Africa should even envision, even country Kenya should envision unless it reaches to that point. Now, the plotters of that Queen Aja are saying that the problem is insecurity and I think poor management of resources, something like that. But of course, those are just grounds. Now, why do you think uh, the State House video that has been released by Ruto as an interpretation? What will be your interpretation? Because I've tried to look at it. I don't think we are much attached. Let's, uh, let's be honest. Kenya is not politically, emotionally, economically attached to Niger. It could just be the international the relations. I don't remember last time Ruto visited the Western country, apart from Nigeria, apart from um, Senegal, where we opened our diplomatic mission there. Nigeria, during the swearing in of former president of, of Timudu, only Mdavari was sent. I don't remember us having a um, very good relationship of any sort of bilateral, strong bilateral ties with Niger. But that video um, has sparked a debate online. And I'm making my first um, position on this, that um, Ruto is coming in. And I think 
could be perceived as a diplomatic uh, is a diplomatic tone but it seems to be grappling with recognition and visibility especially in the continent now as we talk the international media is capturing what's happening in Asia and any other president or any other soundbite any leader that is coming or rather commenting about this is getting visibility both the African media stations and even the international media so probably is getting visibility you no know, visibility is visibility on what you comment about it because this is already something that is trending number two could it be and this is a bit speculative could it be that William Ruto used the Niger case to send a message to his inner circle or would it point for him also grappling with internal legitimacy issues so he's also sending a message indirectly to his uh, inner circle what is happening there is it is some sort of um, it is some sort of um, um, it, it's a coup and as we speak this could also be a possibility that Ruto is also facing through that you know he's also a president he also has legitimacy issues not everyone is supporting him but again i see a possibility uh, you know sudan is also part of um, sahel sahel is a um, is a block bringing together countries i think that is uh, the ones i've mentioned there is also nigeria there is chad sudan mali and other countries amongst other french colonies so uh, and Libya also. So, could William Ruto sending a message to Sudan? And directly, you know, the Sudan general has been uh, threatening as he left, right, and center. And I think he's inconsequential anyway. But then, he's also sending a message that he does not support the coup by civilian. What is happening in Niger? It borders closely what's happening in Sudan because um, Sudan there are two rapid forces paramilitary fighting with the military and the paramilitary which is a civilian rapid support force uh, seems to be alluding to the fact that William Ruto has been supporting the military side so what's also happening here is he's just asserting his authority and also just confirming I'm very sure that Sudan is watching the Sudan generals could have watched that video. Now, when they watch that video, they know very well the position of William Ruto. And they could just be using the Niger issue to respond to the Sudan general. Um, I tend to see William Ruto is campaigning for a seat at the continental level. You know, yes. If you check, you talk to viewers. Though I already have really a number of viewers within the continent here. And when I check videos when William Ruto is making speeches in these continental stages, that those who tout him as the African president, and they successfully done that by making some very uh, explosive speeches, hitting the West, and you know, the African countries that want that. Even if you look at his new dress code, the Kaunda suit, huh? the Kaunda suit is touted as an African dress but then you will realize eh? it's an african dress code most heads of state from africa especially the west africa they of course apart from the muslim culture but look at um for example pan-africanists like um um let me use for example uh kwame nkrumah look the photos of kwame nkrumah he's doing what william Ruto is downing look at plo lumumba is pushing pan-Africanist agenda. So what I also see in the kind of branding that Ruto has been making, he's trying to get himself at the continental stage. And this could have been one of the strategies to assert his authority and maybe upscale his bargain at the continental stage. Someone was um, whispering to me something, I should just say it here, that one of the reasons why Kenya dropped um, why William Ruto began for Raila's role at AU to be uh, dropped and no one was picked because if someone was to be picked from Kenya would have given it to someone else and even there is another EAC position that is coming but Kenya has not been taking those positions is because William Ruto could be plotting to vie 
for the chairmanship of the African Union. Someone told me that in the corridors. I, I don't know. It still remains a speculation. But then, Ruto is reacting because there is something happening there. The foreign influence in Africa is behind the coup. The opposition strongholds in Niger were carrying the Russian flags. So the Russian flags, the Wagner, Russian Wagner group, chanting, uh, supporting in support of Russia. So he's also saying, you know, Ruto is amongst the African president that did not uh, fly to Russia to meet the Putin in the African Russia-African summit. So this could also be a possibility that um, is reacting because of the grip of the foreign influence, especially now that even the Russian um, team could be somewhere in the shadows. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my take. And if you watch that video, what do you think is the real intention? I want to watch. People who also understand geopolitics, huh? uh, let's come here and have this discussion. What is, what exactly is behind it? Because I think we are not attached to Niger. In terms of country relations, maybe someone can tell us in terms of uh, export and import. What are we exporting? What are you importing? That's a country that exports mostly gold, probably, and oil, if I'm not wrong. So, what are the points of attachment between Kenya and Asia that will push State House or William Ruto to make such a solidarity? Of course, there is nothing wrong. Even anyone, even if not a president, can still show. But the fact that he's the first one and is making the first step ahead, it didn't just happen by coincidence. There must be some meaning attached to that. Thank you.